Today I'm going to walk you through on one photo raw's portrait AI. So I have this image here that my son took at his school year end party and I thought it'd be a great image to start with. To access portrait AI we want to go to our right panel here. If yours is closed for some reason you just have to go down to this icon and this hides or shows the right panel. Under the layers, you're going to see portrait here. We're going to click on that and that will trigger portrait AI. The first thing I want to point out is that this icon here is your mask icon. If we click on that, you see it reveals all the mask options we have. You can also double click the name of this and rename it. So I'm going to close this off and then we see right under this our opacity slider and this is basically the strength of the layer. I leave mine at 100% but we'll come back to this later. And then we have style. This is useful if you want to save a particular portrait AI profile. Now by default portrait AI already has some settings in place here. And you can enable or disable any of these by clicking on the blue dots here. Just like that. And you see that now it's grayed out this area. But we're going to leave that back on. The first section is skin. Now I'm going to click details so we have the options showing. And the first slider is like the overall adjustment. If I were to take this slider and bring it all the way up, you're going to see that her face is much more softened up there. And if I bring it back down, you see the original. I like to leave it at about 50 to start. You also see this drop down menu with an option for surface blur or frequency separation. I use frequency separation 99% of the time. Frequency separation is like another layer that works just on the skin and it doesn't affect everything else. And I also find that I can get better results with it. What I'm going to do now is bring down all these settings and we're going to start from scratch and I'm actually going to turn off all the other features here as well. So first we have blemishes here and I'm going to slide it all the way to the right so that you can see the effects of it. I'm going to turn it off and on so you can see a before and after. Here's a before and here's after. The skin's smoother. Some of the blemishes have been taken care of but you can see some a little bit but I'm going to bring this back down to about 50 percent and then we'll make adjustments as we go. Detail and texture, you want to use these in combination. Again, I like to keep it at around 50 just to start. You want to be careful with these because it can enhance blemishes and imperfections even more. So that's why I like to start at about 50%. Smoothing is pretty obvious. It makes the skin really smooth. So if we crank this all the way, see how smooth that gets. Now it's a little much for me. We'll dial it back right around the 50 mark. And then we have shine and these are for like these highlighted parts. It doesn't completely get rid of it, but it does dull it down. It lessens the shine quite a bit there. So if we do a before and an after of all the face settings, you see the before and the after. A much smoother face we have here and it looks really good. Let me back off here. Very acceptable results that I'd be super happy with. So this is a good starting point and now let's look at the other face options. The first one is brightness and if we slide it to the right you're going to see the face brighten up even more. If we bring it back down, you see its original state. I did brighten it up just a tad here. Then we have the slim face option and it can make the face slimmer. Doesn't do anything to the eyes because you can make that adjustment afterwards. Not going to use it for this image because it's not needed. Now I find this next feature very useful. You can adjust the size of the eye individually. So if I bring this up, the left eye, well her right or left, it's increased now I can do it for the right as well. Staying with the eyes one of the things I really like is that if you click this icon here and you go over here you can make adjustments to the not the shape of the eye but where the effects gonna take place. If I wanted to manipulate this and make it a bit bigger I can do that. Sometimes the AI won't make a good selection of the eye or the mouth. You can make slight adjustments to it. For example, if I bring the brightness of the eye slider up, if I come back to the slider here and let's say I move this, you see that the brightness is affecting the area. You can use this and reposition it to where you want it to be. 
let's bring this down a little bit. It's a bit too bright. Whitening obviously makes the eyes nice and white. We'll use about 40. Next we have detail. Now if I bring it all the way to the right, it's a bit much. If I bring it left, you see how dull it kind of is. So probably about halfway would be nice. Underneath detail, we have dark circles. We'll bring that over. You see there's quite a bit of dark circling on the eye bags here. If I bring this right, it lightens up, bring it back down. So we can actually use this. And then brow enhancer will make the eyebrows just a bit more bolder there. Give it a bit more contrast, right? So let's do a quick before and after here. We see the eyes. There we go. There's also an option for auto red eye removal. We don't need it for this particular picture, but it's great to have that option as well. Let's look at the mouth options now. We're gonna open that up. This also has the same feature of the eyes where if I click on that, go over here, I can adjust the mouth settings here and I actually will just a little bit because it's just a tad off and we're gonna close this area here. It doesn't have to be super accurate, but you want it to be as accurate as possible. The first option is teeth whitening. There's no teeth showing. If you slide it to the right, it will just make the teeth whiter. Pretty straightforward. We have a vibrant slider. So if you look at the mouth, it becomes more vibrant. We'll leave it around the 50 mark. We can make the lips brighter or else slightly darker. And then you can change the hue of the lips as well. So let's back off a little bit and we'll do before and after. There's the before and there's the after. So if we come back now here to the top, we can either use the overall retouching tool. If we want more of the effect, you see how much more smoother it becomes. Although it looks really plastically, so I wouldn't go that far. So I would bring it down to a place where it still looks realistic, but not too overbearing. You can also do the same thing with the opacity slider. So let's say I brought that up and then brought the opacity down, it kind of has the same type of effect. I always like to keep the opacity at 100% and just use the retouching slider instead. Let's do a before and after. There's a before and there's the after. So assuming you like this profile, what you can do is go back to style, click on the drop down and save new style. We'll just call this portrait rev one and we'll click on save. Now what we can do is pick a similar image. So I've got one here, trigger the portrait AI settings, and then we'll go into style and then you'll see the style here. So I'm going to click on that and you see it automatically puts that on. If we do a before and after. It really just saves you time from doing all that work again. Of course, as you see, I would have to do a few more tweaks, but at least we have a good starting point. One other thing I found really useful was that when you have multiple people in the picture, Portrait AI works with each individual person. As you see here, we have two people in this image. We click on Portrait AI and you'll see two icons for each person. So if I just focus on the person on the right here, let's say I bring the retouching all the way up, maybe the blemishes. If I do a before and after here, you see that it's just affecting the person on the right. Now, if I click on the other individual, I can make some adjustments to this. Let's say I want to make the face less brighter. It's just affecting the person on the left. So that's very handy and super useful. One other thing I want to point out is the retouching tools. If we go to the left panel here and click on retouch. At the top, we have various options here. We have our healing brush, perfect eraser, retouch brush, and the clone and stamp tool. And each of these functions have different options. The healing brush is fairly simple to use. Let me just demo it really quickly here. So let's say I want to get rid of some of these blemishes. I can simply go over some of these blemishes here and you see the red is where I've selected and the green is where it's sampling. It. So it's sort of like clone and stamp where I can position this anywhere on the, on the face here to really just clone and sample another area to get rid of some of these blemishes. And this could work fairly well for the most part. So I'm just going to do a few here. Now, if you come up here and toggle auto, you're going to see all your other spots that you have picked. 
So I'm just going to select a few more here and we'll see the results. If I do a simple before and after, you see the blemishes that were there before. I find the perfect eraser tool works very well for blemishes too. So if we use this tool instead, we see that it's getting rid of these little marks. And it's actually very useful for like heavy acne, heavy blemishes. So if I go over this area here, it's going to remove a lot of it. You know, you'd have to be really careful with these and work in smaller chunks and it would take quite a bit of time. However, they also have this retouch tool. And this tool is for blemishes like this, where you have severe blemishing, right? From acne, that type of thing. So if I simply just brush over this area here, you see it's gonna soften the redness. It's not gonna completely take it away, but what it does, it evens out the skin so that you can use the other tools and do more retouching. Now I have my opacity at 40%, because you don't wanna be too aggressive with it. It's more of a gradual thing you wanna do. So if we go over these really bright spots here, it's going to be a little dulled down now and less severe. So I would go over these spots multiple times, start from the outside in and kind of work my way in so that we have some natural blending here, right? Now this is real time and you'll notice that there's a little bit of a delay whenever I use this tool. And even with the healing brush and the perfect eraser tool, it's a little sluggish for me, to be honest. Like it works well, but it's just not fast enough. And I have adjusted my preferences. So I would do something like that. I might even come up to the eraser. Let's increase my brush a little bit. Let's say I wanted to kind of get rid of this area here. Now it even starts to blend even more so. And then lastly, we have the clone and stamp tool. Now the way this works is that you hold alt. You're going to see a little crosshair there. If we click on that, it's going to sample from that area. So if we want to clean up this area here, sample it from that side of the skin, and then we do the same thing for this one. This is not something that you can rush. So we'll sample here, take care of this area here. So you see now this area is starting to come together. And then I can use the retouch tool here just to clean things up, get a bit more blending. It's coming along quite nice here, but it is quite a bit of work to do. This is more traditional retouching. So that's a quick overview of On One Photo Raw's Portrait AI and Retouch tools. Let me know in the comments below if you want a more detailed, in-depth retouching tutorial. And since my last Versus video was fairly popular, also let me know if you want to see a comparison to Luminar Neo. Now, if you haven't seen that video where I put Noiseless AI versus No Noise AI, make sure to check that video out right there. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.